Hi everyone. Welcome to the Chemical Engineering Process Design Learning Videos with Aspen Plus Software. This is our 10th video lesson. This video lesson provides you knowledge and skills on an introduction to pinch technology and how to use Aspen software tools to simulate pinch analysis. Most of the chemical processes involve heat transfer either from one process stream to another process stream. That means interchanging between the process streams or from an utility stream to a process stream. The target of any chemical process designer is to maximize the process to process heat recovery and to minimize the utility otherwise energy requirements. To meet this goal, an appropriate heat exchanger network is required. Pinch technology is a systematic methodology to determine this energy efficient heat exchanger network. There can be three types of heat streams available in a chemical process. They are hot streams, cold streams and utility streams. Hot streams are the streams that must be cooled or available to be cooled so that the inlet temperature of that stream is larger than the outlet temperature. Cold streams are the streams that must be heated or available to be heated so that the inlet temperature of a cold stream is lower than the outlet temperature. The utility streams are the streams that are used to heat or cool down a process stream when heat exchange between process streams is not practical or economic. Examples for hot utilities are steam, hot water, flue gas. Examples for coal utilities are cooling water, air, refrigerant. We need to extract thermal data of process and utility streams for pinch analysis using the process flow diagram. Mainly, there are four types of thermal data required. Supply temperature of the stream that means the available temperature of the stream, target temperature that the stream must be taken into, heat capacity flow rate of the stream in kilowatt per degree Celsius, enthalpy change for that stream. Enthalpy change can be calculated using the heat capacity flow rate and the difference between the supply temperature and the target temperature. According to the second law of thermodynamics, the design of any heat transfer equipment must not have any temperature crossover between the hot and the cold stream. The temperature of the hot and cold stream at any point in the heat exchanger must have a minimum temperature difference. This minimum temperature difference is symbolized as delta T minimum. For a heat exchanger, we can use the governing equation as Q is equal to U A delta T minimum. Based on this equation, delta minimum cannot be equal to zero. Because if delta T minimum is equal to zero, there is no heat transfer. When delta T minimum increases, the heat duty increases. That means the external utilities increase. This will cause the energy cost to be increased. On the other hand, when delta T minimum decreases, the area of the heat exchanger increases to maintain the heat duty. The area requirement increases means the capital cost of the equipment increases. Therefore, delta T minimum should be kept at a certain value to compromise 
between the energy cost and the capital cost. For various types of processors, delta T minimum is taken by experience. For shell and tube heat exchangers, the typical delta T minimum values for various types of processors are indicated in this table. For oil refining processors, the delta T minimum is generally taken between 20 to 40 degrees Celsius. For petrochemical applications, the delta T minimum is taken from 10 to 20 degrees Celsius. Especially for chemical processors, the delta T minimum is generally taken between 10 to 20 degrees Celsius. For low temperature processors, the delta T minimum is generally taken between 3 to 5 degrees Celsius. The composite curves can be introduced as the temperature versus enthalpy profiles of heat availability in the hot processors, that means the hot composite curve, and the heat demands in the cold processors, that means the cold composite curve, together in a graphical representation. Any stream with a constant heat capacity value is represented on a TH diagram by a straight line connecting the stream supply temperature and the stream target temperature. The combined composite curves in a TH diagram are used to predict targets for minimum energy required that means both hot and cold utility requirement, minimum heat exchanger network area required, and minimum number of heat exchanger units required. The hot composite curve must lie above the cold composite curve, approaching each other most closely at one point, defined as the minimum approach temperature delta T minimum. This point of delta T minimum represents a bottleneck in heat recovery and it is referred to as the pinch point. The delta T minimum determines how closely the hot and cold composite curves can be pinched or squeezed without violating the second law of thermodynamics. Again, the second law of thermodynamics confirms None of the heat exchangers can have a temperature crossover. At a particular delta T minimum value, the overlap shows the maximum potential for process to process heat recovery. The hot end and cold end overshoots shows the requirement of hot and cold utilities. Therefore, in overall, when we have the TH diagram for a system, we can find out the minimum hot utility requirement and the minimum cold utility requirement as well as the process to process heat recovery potential. The rule of thumb in placing the composite curves in the TH diagram is following up the pinch point. So let's consider this example with four process streams where two hot streams and two cold streams are available. We need to draw the composite curves and find out the minimum utility requirements for this system. This system shows two reactors in parallel. So we have reactor feed 1 entering at 20 degrees Celsius and it is preheated up to 180 degrees Celsius. The product 1 coming out from the reactor 1 is cooled down from 250 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius. Similarly, the feed number 2 to the reactor 2 is heated up from 140 degrees Celsius up to 230 degrees Celsius. The product 2 coming out from the reactor number 2 is cooled down from 200 degrees Celsius to 80 degrees Celsius. To solve this problem, first let's perform it manually and then let's use Aspen software tools 
to simulate the pinch analysis for this example. First, let's extract the thermal data for the streams from the process flow diagram. Let's take delta T minimum as 10 degrees Celsius based on the general convention. When we place all the acquired thermal data in a table, it will be very useful to solve the problem as well as to plot the composite curves. We can plot the hot composite curve individually in a TH diagram as indicated here. The two hot streams can be combined to be one composite curve so that the intermediate heat capacity becomes 0 0.4. Similarly, we can plot the cold composite curve and combine it to be one composite curve and the intermediate heat capacity becomes 0 0.5. By placing the both combined hot and cold composite curves in one TH diagram, we can obtain the pinch diagram. We can place the two composite curves so that the delta T minimum is equal to 10 degrees Celsius. By placing the composite curves in the TH diagram like that, we can graphically find out the minimum cold utility requirement equals to 10 megawatt and the minimum hot utility requirement becomes 7.5 megawatt. Next, we will see how we can utilize Aspen simulation tools to simulate this pinch analysis problem and create the composite curves and the TH diagram using the software. Go to all programs, Aspen Tech folder and open the Aspen Energy Analyzer. It would be beneficial to know Aspen Energy Analyzer method to individually perform pinch analysis for any given system. Click on Managers, Heat Integration Manager. Then select Heat Integration Case and click on Add button. Then we can enter the thermal data of our streams in the given sheet. So we can enter the thermal data for stream number 1, inlet temperature as 20 degrees Celsius, outlet temperature as 180 degrees Celsius and enter the heat capacity of stream number 1 as 200 kilojoules per degree Celsius per second. Note that in this program, the default unit is kilojoules per degree Celsius per hour. So select the correct unit and the value will be converted based on the default unit. Similarly, enter the other three stream data with inlet and outlet temperatures, CP values and we can observe that the enthalpies are automatically calculated by the software. After entering the thermal data of each stream, 
click on open targets view in the top panel. We can see that under the energy targets, the hot utility requirement and the cold utility requirement are almost equal to the manual solution results. Note that the default unit for enthalpy in this software is kilojoules per hour. So, 7.5 megawatt is equal to 2.7 multiplied by 10 to the power of 7 kilojoules per hour and 10 megawatt is equal to 3.6 10 to the power of 7 kilojoule per hour. And also we can observe that the delta T minimum used in this software is 10 degrees Celsius. Later if we want we can change this delta T minimum according to our requirement. Since this is only an introductory lesson for pinch analysis, we are not going to talk about area targets and cost index targets for this problem. When you learn about pinch analysis more in the future, you can use these options in this software to perform a full pinch analysis for a given chemical process. We can observe the composite curves by clicking the plots tables button. The composite curves are generated by the software and we can observe that the assigned pinch is shown in the TH diagram. So we are clear about how to find the pinch point for a given system. As a summary, in this lesson we learnt pinch analysis helps to optimize the economy of heat exchanger networks. Aspen Energy Analyzer software can perform simulations for pinch analysis. Please watch our next video lesson about catalytic packed bed reactor design using Aspen Plus software. Until we meet with our next lesson, have a nice day and goodbye.